Hello everyone, welcome to the second lesson of Python 30 course. In this video, we are going to learn about mastering the Python date time module. Especially, we are going to talk about Python date time and time delta objects. Now, before we start, a small request for you. If you feel you are benefiting from these videos, make sure to tweet your daily progress with hashtag Python 30. That way, more people can learn about this course and benefit from it. Now you know the drill. Once you finish this tutorial, you have to go ahead to my GitHub repository and try to solve the questions provided for this topic. Don't check the solutions file first. Try to solve the question yourself. Also remember one thing. If you solve the question and you have a better solution than the solution proposed in my, in my repository, then make sure to send a pull request to the GitHub account. That way, I can include your solution in my repository and can also mention your name and other details. That is a great way to be recognized within the Python community. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get started. As a data engineer, I tend to work with date time objects every day of my life. For example, filtering data between particular dates, extracting data from certain APIs every day at 6 am for the last complete day and so on. One of my regular tasks is to maintain an AWS Lambda function that runs every hour and collects the WLM statistics of our Redshift cluster. The logs are outputted to an S3 bucket. I have a Python script that extracts data from the logs every one hour and plots the irregularities in Looker. This task also requires playing with date time objects. Conveniently, Python provides the date time module for dealing with date and time objects. It is simple to learn and easy to implement. In this video, I am going to walk you through the various concepts of this amazing library with simple yet effective examples to improve your understanding in this matter. Let's talk about getting current date and time. To get the current date and time, we can use the date time class. Let's see it in code. From date time import date time Let's create three variables, current date time and assign it date time dot now, then current date equal to current date time dot date and then current time equal to date current date time dot time. Now let's print each of this current date time, current date, and finally our current time. You can see that when we print this out, we see the current date time, which, which has a date, today's date, and also today's time. Then we can use the date method on our date time dot now, and then we can get the date part out of it. And then also we can use the time method to get the time part out of it. Let's talk about splitting date and time into its components. We can use the date time objects class attributes for splitting a timestamp into its constituent components like year, month, day, hour, minute and seconds. Let's see all of this in our code. Now we know that in order to get the current date and time, we need to use the date time dot now method. We can also split it into its uh, constituent components. How? Let's do that. If we want the year, we can uh, do date underscore time dot year. So year is basically a class attribute. If we use this, we are going to get the year for it. So the year is 2019. You know what? Let's print date time as well. So we all know what we are doing. So out of this date time string, we are getting the year. Similarly, for month, we can pass in the month class attribute and then we get just the month. Similarly, for day, we can pass in the day attribute. Then we just get the day. And similarly, for hour, we can pass in the hour attribute. And the hour is 00, zero right now. For minute, we can pass in the minute attribute. The minute is 16. And for second, we can pass in the second attribute right so the second is 27 
So this is how you can use the class attributes in order to split the date time into its constituent components. A time delta object provides the difference between two dates or times. The general syntax looks like this. All the arguments are optional and default to zero. You can pass in both positive and negative values. This is a great tool to possess while dealing with Python date time objects. Let's understand how to use it with some examples. Let's solve a question. What is the date and time two days, three hours and 15 minutes ahead of now? So here we are going to use the date time class to get the current date and time. And now we also have to use the time delta class. So we can say time diff equal to time delta and then we have to pass in the necessary arguments. So we can say um, day days equal to 2 and then we can say hours equal to 3 and then we can say minutes equal to 15 all right and then we have the time diff all we have to do is add this time difference to our current date and time so we can say required date time equal to date underscore time plus time diff that's it and then when we print the required date time we should get our own result so two days three hours and 15 minutes from now is going to be 2019 june 11 uh, 4 a.m in the morning two minutes 59 seconds so this is easily how you can use the time delta class now you can also use it uh, for negative values so for example instead of ahead of now how about behind now so basically we were we are checking what is the date time two days three hours 15 minutes before now right so here instead of passing two you can pass minus two instead of hours you can pass minus three and instead of minutes uh, 15 you can pass in minus 15 so basically all negative values and then when you run this you get exactly the date you want so two days three hours 15 minutes before now is 6th of june 2019 9 pm or 21 hours 33 minutes 50 seconds we can create manual date and time objects in our python application using the python date time module so let's create a manual date time object so from date time import date time the obvious thing so let's create some manual date time objects so let's say i want to create a date object for 2019 June 1 all right so here I can say required date equal to date time and then I can pass in year 2019 then I can pass in month as 6 it's June and then I can pass in day as 1 right now when I print this print required date we can see that it automatically contains a time information as well it does give us our date and if I use a dot date method here it will only return us the date right so it's clear however if I don't use the date method it is also going to return me the time all right why because it is a date time object now the time is automatically set to 00 hours or basically 12 in the midnight now if we just want the date what we can do number one we can use the dot date method here like i just showed you or what we can do instead of using the date time class here we can just use the date class so for example if i do this instead of date, date time i use the date class and then i print out the required date then i just get the date we can do the similar thing for time so let's say i just want to create a time object for 9 a.m in the morning all right so here I can say required time equal to time I can pass the time class and instead of year month and day these are not valid anymore and I can pass hour equal to 9 that's it and here if I print required time I can get 
9 a.m. in the morning. So this is my time object. So basically you can play with date, time and date time class to create a manual date time object of your choice. So thank you everyone for watching. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel and share this video with your friends. In the next video, we are going to talk about the STRP time and the STRF time methods in Python date time module. See you next time.